I'm going to show you sort of how quickly this can actually occur in the practice. So I'm going to start with our zones. Remember we talked about I'm going to start by just taking our oral commissure straight down as an inferior extension. We've got our oral commissure here through the marionette also as an inferior extension. We, this is going to help demarcate zone one. We're going right through our submental crease. When he's sitting, even laying back, I can feel his thyroid cartilage bulge. So we're going to go right across here, or actually closer to the hyoid. So we have zone one. The no treatment zone, I'm going to just turn your head this way again, is going to basically be along the inferior border of the mandible and connecting to our submental crease. I can feel for the antagonial notch right here. So I drop about 1.5 centimeters or so below because this is basically going to be, and do you have another color for me? Any color will do. Perfect. Preferably a Sharpie marker. <laughs> Just teasing. So now we're going to take our course of our marginal mandibular nerve going through here, and then at the antagonial notch, we've got some of our uh, vessels making that turn. And I'm going to be wiping that off in a moment, ladies, so if you'd be so kind to grab something, because that's going to be right in my treatment zone. And we'll talk about how to stay safe. So we've got this area where our nerve, artery, and vein are going to be. Someone asked me earlier about a lateral component carotid sheath. It's the anterior borosternal cleidomastoid muscle. Dr. Singh has great anatomy, thin altogether, fit gentleman. When you turn your head to the right, watch what happens. You see this? I don't know if you can appreciate as much with the lighting. The bulge looks straight for me. Turn your neck straight. Okay. Now turn all the way to the right. There we go. Look at that pop. That is the sternal cleidomastoid muscle. I stay right along it and we hug right down to it, and this is now going to be at our antagonial notch. If we drop this, this is zone two, and now we've got zone three, because the antagonial notch gives us, so we've got three, two, one, and now I'm gonna turn you forward. And if he had fullness down here, down to the thought two further, I would come across here, and this would typically be four. I think Netter is going to rename the antagonial notch the notch of Shudharani. Very good. <laughs> Perfect. That would be ideal. Um, okay, so this is how we would mark that area. Now, obviously, mark the contralateral side. I'll take another white marking pencil, please, that's prepped. Thank you. Now, how do we mark the actual jowl area? I'm going to come around back here to the front. You're totally fine. So what we were talking about earlier was looking for some of these defining points. So we're already working our way through the marionette, which is basically the pre-jowl sulcus. I'm going to now connect from my lateral canthus to my antagonial notch. So actually, could I just get you to sit up, please? Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and turn you so all of our colleagues can see. Lovely. So I'm going to bring you back just a little bit right here. So I've got my antagonial notch here. Uh, I want to give them. There we go, good. I'm gonna cur go ahead and connect this, a little bit of a curvilinear. And so now I've got my points. Now I've also got his central menton. So if you think about the extension through the labial mental sulcus, working our way up to the ear lobule, we are now identifying for him for the most part where there's going to be a little bit of loss of some of the structure and everything that we, or some of the fullness and what we have here. So this is identifying right into our zone. We have our inferior border, the no treatment zone, and therefore we have been able to mark out and grid, or excuse me, mark out our jaw fat pad. Now, this is where it would be. That doesn't mean the whole area needs to be treated. Dr. Singh doesn't have heaviness or whatnot back here. You may have a little bit of skin laxity, but we don't want to core out all of this either because his main area within here that's a little bit full is just here at the oral commissure. So it's actually a more limited area to the kind of medial inferior jaw fat pad and a touch of the superior jaw fat pad. So I'm working right now on talking about how to contour this area. We're going to work a little bit through the inferior jaw fat pad only where he needs it. And again, maybe do a little drop through the superior jaw fat pad. But that's how we go ahead and mark and assess this area. Mm -hmm.